Hello and welcome to Summer of the Arts Creative Conversations. I'm Lisa Barnes, Executive Director of Summer of the Arts, and my guest is Deanne Wortman, local storyteller, artist, one of the first people involved with the Iowa Arts Festival. So she has all kinds of great stories to tell us. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for keeping the art going. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I will say when Summer of the Arts was formed, I was working for the Downtown Association, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is my dream job. My career's been in association management and to work for an arts organization. I was so excited, and I think that it's so important to build community through the arts. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. tell me a little bit about your history. Obviously, you know, worked at the public library and did story time. And like I said, definitely a storyteller. So tell us a little bit about your background. Well, we came to Iowa City as students. Actually, I came here as uh, when my father was a student here. So I actually have lived in Iowa City on and off my whole life. Um, but then I came back to go to college, met my husband. We got married. We lived in the barracks. We lived in the barracks. I think I was seven or eight years old before I lived in a house mm -hmm. uh, with one student thing and another. Um, so I studied here, and I got three degrees, and I met all the uh, artsy people. Uh, my dad was an artist, too, so I grew up in an artist family. Um, so it sort of seemed normal <laughs> to do So what are the degrees? Um, I have a BFA in printmaking from the University of Iowa, and that involved Lazansky mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and then I got a, um, a BFA in uh, drawing, mm -hmm. and then uh, an MA in, uh, or an MFA in intermedia arts, which brings all the arts together. So it's performative and uh, music and speech and text and anything you want. And that was with Hans Brader. And, um, and that suits me very well because I like everything. So that's <laughs> wonderful. The, the everything degree is intermedia arts. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the last degree that you got yeah. of the three? Yeah. yeah. And then my husband and I have lived here for about 40 years, so we've been here forever. And all the time that we were going to school, we were also working, both of us, raising kids, etc. And um, so I began, I got a job with the public library. Uh, before that, I was a city bus driver, and I have bus driver stories, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> Everybody rides the bus. Right. Um, and then I went to the library, and it was in the children's room, and I was there for about 20 years. And um, the, my, at that time, well, I don't have any library degrees, so I wasn't actually a librarian. I was on an LA two or something like that, mm -hmm. <laughs> library assistant two or three. Mm -hmm. But mainly I did storytelling uh, and programs for children and um, finding books for parents and for children. And it was all very public interaction and it was all about promoting reading and mm -hmm. thinking and imagining and so on. So um, the story time I turned into somewhat performative with puppets and interaction with the kids and uh, brought my friends in and uh, musicians and, and other people. Um, and so I did that for all that time. Then um, I finally retired and immediately got another job <laughs> <laughs> teaching hot stamp foiling um, okay. because Virginia Myers at the university had been a professor of mine for a long time. She invented this technology, which is another thing that people might like to find out about, mm -hmm. um, and taught a special course at the university in hot stamp foiling. So I took her summer workshop for several years, and when she finally retired, I was asked to be the um, adjunct. So I taught that, and then I was asked to be a director of an arts and engineering program in the University College of Engineering. <laughs> it was called Nexus of Engineering and the Arts. Okay. <laughs> so it's able to bring all of this uh, arty world that I grew up in and lived in for all that time to engineering students and to the world of counting and numbers. How and fascinating. It's very interesting, absolutely interesting. Um, it all kind of shut down with COVID mm -hmm. and funding after five years, uh, and it was very sad that I had to leave it because we had over 141 engineering students signed wow. up 
for the programs we were doing, and they were bringing all of their technical knowledge uh -huh. to the wonders of technology, which is much like the wonders of art thinking and so on. Right. We were doing some really, really interesting projects together. But then COVID came and everything shut down, and mm -hmm. now I've been sitting here twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> Looking for the next project? <laughs> well, I joined Artifactory, okay, which is great. something to talk about also. Uh -huh. um, it's a group of artists, and we are in the basement of the Wesley Building, mm -hmm. and we have life drawing. We have uh, several small theater groups are working down there. We have a theater stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an exhibit space. Um, we have a monthly television program called Art in the Afternoon where we interview artists and show their work and mm -hmm. so on. And, and then uh, I run an art uh, hot stamp foiling workshop down there so people can come down there. We have a small printing press. Um, and I'll just put a little promo in here. We have a really interesting show on right now. It's by the people called Inside Out. Okay. Inside Out is a, a rehabilitation program with a prison. Okay. These are prisoners. And um, so this program brings them to drawing and painting and poetry and so on. And we're having a, a wonderful big exhibit of all their artwork down wow. there right now. So people should go down and see that. It's, That's wonderful. It's quite wonderful. How long is that exhibit going to be available? Um, I think all of the month of February, maybe into March. I don't know okay. the dates exactly. Um, early in February, I think it's on the 10th, maybe there's a reception. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see the arts extend into other parts of real living. Um, so I'm curious to know, obviously, growing up, you always knew that you were going to be involved with the arts, and obviously you've done a lot of different things with your creative pursuits and interests. So I'm interested to know from your perspective what changes you've seen over the past, let's just say 20 years, um, what changes you've seen, because I know like when I was growing up, Art was such a huge part of my life too, you know, and you had regular art classes and you learned about mm -hmm. all different types of things. You know, I remember doing screen printing in high school oh, and that kind fun, of thing. Right? Yeah, it was wonderful. And, and my kids then growing up and that art isn't as big a part of people's lives, which makes me very sad. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious to see, you know, what you've seen as far as the past 20 years and changes and people's involvement in the arts. I think the change is technology, mm -hmm. and I think all of this internet wonderful equipment <laughs> <laughs> has um, changed things in that people aren't really doers anymore, they're consumers. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to you know, take your device and just click on something. You, it will help you make cartoons, it will help you write poetry, it will help you whatever. I think that's the big problem. Now, yeah. interestingly, within engineering, uh, where they are all techno nerds, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean that in a kindly way, <laughs> um, but they are so highly technical there. Um, what was really interesting is watching the students I was working with because they were coming to the Nexus because they enjoyed the arts. Mm -hmm. But their arts included technology that I knew nothing about and can't use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what was really interesting is we had these conversations and I said, you realize this technology that you're using was made by someone else, and not by you. And so sometimes they would arrive at a problem in projects that we were talking about, which could only be solved by their own thinking skills. Being creative. The, programs mm -hmm. really are very limited. Mm -hmm. And most people don't really realize that until you're actually in a builder maker situation, the limitations of technology. Mm -hmm. So I think the change is that people just uh, click it on and that's all the farther they go. Yeah, They don't go into the creative process, mm -hmm. not really. Um, and the engineering students were very interested when I would point out flaws in their design that were related to the fact that they were using a pre-described program instead of their own thoughts. Yeah. I said, it's the hand, the eye, and the brain, guys. It's, 
it's this, this, yeah, <laughs> and real life experience. Yeah, even for engineers, that's true. So I think that's sort of been the basic change. Also, people don't talk to each other anymore. Yeah. So story time is, is um, virtual. Yeah. All the interactive things are virtual. I mean, you and I are actually speaking to another. Right. But everybody else is at home washing dishes or, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's losing <clears throat> that connection. I agree. And when the pandemic hit, mm-hmm. you know, that, that was something for us because our mission is building community. And how do you do that if you can't actually get people together in the same space? Yes, yeah, exactly. And so it was really interesting for us trying to pivot that year and providing the virtual programming, which really isn't the same, you know, and doing the drive-in movies was really fun. You know, I, I yeah. think that's one of the things that we did that yeah. worked out well. And then that was also when we started with A Truckload of Soul with Kevin Burt, going out into the neighborhoods, people were able to social distance and still hear yeah. live music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with you. And I, I can't imagine if my kids were young at this point, what it was like for those families and having to deal with that and the isolation. The isolation is the other thing. And you notice when you read in the newspaper, depression, um, overeating, um, all of these sort of violent health. behavior. Yeah. <clears throat> I really think it's a result of isolation. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I think getting together, um, uh, and in doing something that isn't prescribed, let's have an adventure. You know, yes. let's let's try it. Yeah. And you know, will this work? I don't know. <laughs> Can we find out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the fun part. <clears throat> Absolutely, and yeah. that is fun. Yes. I agree. And your mistakes. The other thing I would always tell the, especially the engineering students, is you can't make a mistake. Mm-hmm. You can't. It's just another doorway that opened up. Go there. Mm-hmm. It, it's possible that that is where you should be going, not where you thought you were going. Yep. And, and so you have to be sort of a brave explorer of yeah. ideas and materials and Agreed. interactions and all that sort of stuff. So I think that message is a hard one for people who have you know, depended on technology mm-hmm. to solve all their questions mm-hmm. and all their answers and everything. And so here's an old grump talking, right? <laughs> I think I think the technology is wonderful and amazing, but I think it has to be made human. Got to be a balance. It has to be a tool. And that's mm-hmm. what I kept telling the engineering students. The pencil is a tool. The camera is a tool. The computer is a tool. Yes. You're the tool user. Yes. <laughs> um, You've got to put yourself into it. That's the connection that's missing, mm-hmm. I think. And I don't know that all of this technology is really encouraging independent thought very much. I agree. I agree. I think it's a narrowing down, not a widening out. Yeah. So um, you were involved in some of the early days of the Iowa Arts Festival, Mm -hmm. and this is actually Mm -hmm. the 40th anniversary this year, which we're very excited about. Wow. So I was hoping that you could just share, you know, kind of how it started, your early involvement with the event. I believe I, at one point, I was told that it was actually kind of the merging of two different events, the Kids Fest and then the Art Fair part. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Well, and I'm very bad at dates, so I can't That's tell okay. you how far back dates. I'm going. But <laughs> <clears throat> my involvement occurred, as I said, through being in the library with children's programming. Mm-hmm. And then Monica Leo of Oil and Spiegel Puppets and I were very good friends, and we had worked together with her puppet show <coughs> for many years. And one day, one day, I'm going to be telling you a story here. Uh, <laughs> didn't happen in one day, but one day, <laughs> Monica and I were going around, and um, there were a bunch of folks from Cedar Rapids recruiting uh, audiences for an event they were having in Cedar Rapids, an arts event. Yeah. And we looked at each other and we thought, here we live in this city crammed with artists. Why are everybody being invited to go away? Yep. So we decided to begin to think of an idea of how to have our own arts festival. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Other people were thinking the same thing. I don't mean to make it sound like I was the <laughs> genius for all of it, but it was a converging of these things. So. Um, she and I went around and talked to business owners and to uh, city people and mm-hmm. so on, 
And we proposed the idea that the business owners who were spending a lot of money to support art elsewhere could support art in Iowa City. Mm -hmm. And um, the I idea took off and there were a group, I think of maybe four or five of us and we were all women, which was interesting too, with arts interests. Kristen Summerwill was mm -hmm. there and uh, Monica and myself and then I forget who else was there. So we just got together and we said, well, let's do a festival. Now at the library, I was also because my role as a child in the children's room was children's programming, mm -hmm. uh, and the summer is wonderful, and we're just right downtown, and there was the walking mall and all of that, and so I said, well, why don't we put up tents and have activities for kids outside? Mm -hmm. So for a couple of years, I did that on my own, the library. It wasn't part of my library job, but the library was sponsoring it. Um, and so all of these things came together and we had the idea that we would feature artists downtown. We had the children's thing going on right outside the library. Right. Um, and there was the nice square downtown with the fountain and everything. Um, and the idea took off. And um, in the beginning, the musicians and so on that were part performing for us, nobody was paid. There was no money. No one was paid. We mm -hmm. weren't paid. They weren't paid. Everybody was doing it just out of pleasure. And, yeah, and, and to bring of, the community together. Yeah, yeah, and to show off what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had um, the school bands came, yeah. um, all sorts of very interesting folks, uh, individual performers who wanted right. a platform and wanted an audience. Um, we had little tents around where people would do art things with the children mm -hmm. that were related to the library. Um, <clears throat> and from there the idea just took off and it, it grew to what it is now. It's gone through many changes during, right. the, during the, the period of time. Uh, one of them is money. <laughs> we didn't have any money, mm -hmm. uh, so it was all volunteers. And um, yes, there were some very interesting things going on. Um, and, and that's the very, very beginning at the very right. beginning. Right, um, and I continued to be involved through the the library. Mm -hmm. if, you know, as long as I was working at the library, every summer we we did communicate um, and do a summer thing. But it it, it drew in more and more people and yeah. more and more support. And look at what it is now. And I mean, it's just fabulous. And do you have a favorite memory <clears throat> from Arts Fest? Um, Anything that really stands out to you? I have some memories from story time, which is sort of the same. Yeah. We're doing storytelling out there. I had a friend of mine who had a baby. And so here we are doing storytelling for children about, and I said, this is about babies. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so my friend came and sat down with her baby and we were doing stories and talking and so on. And then she starts to unbutton her shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to feed the baby. Right. In front of the camera. Huh? in the library and I thought oh dear how do we get around this <laughs> because she probably should not be undressing in front of all these children yeah on the camera in front of all of Iowa City yeah that was very funny <laughs> um, another time it was Halloween and I was telling a story that had a witch in it and down front were um, a, a couple of children who suddenly went like this, I'm going, oh my goodness, okay, so these are people who find these kinds of stories a problem. Uh, scary. Not only scary, but wrong, yeah. and it turns out that these were, we had people coming to the library who didn't have um, intellectual backgrounds or intellectual homes. There was always a worry about whether something, they would be exposed to something bad at the library and mm -hmm. something troublesome. Well. Witches and goats are not okay for people who have certain religious beliefs. Sure. And that's what these two children were. So oh. I'm fast. I'm thinking, I don't want these children to not ever come to the library. Right. Yeah, they need to be in the library. So I had to immediately change the story and really make the witch part not the big important part of mm -hmm. the story. And uh, so that they could stay and enjoy the story time. Mm -hmm. um, so all sorts of things like that were happening. Um, and that's part of being a storyteller. 
It's also part of working with the public. Yes. And being in public light. Mm -hmm. And because we were videotaping everything, it wasn't just staying in the storeroom. It right. was going out all over town. Yeah. And we did have to be sensitive to people whose ideas were not like ours. Mm -hmm. Um, that was true with, with uh, finding books in the library. The parents would sometimes be very worried that the kids might get a book that was bad for them. Right. I remember one was about uh, a family of, let's see, what were they? Pigs, I think. And the mom and dad decided to go out for the night and they got a babysitter who was a wolf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so, it, the story is that the children were much cleverer than the wolf, and they managed to not only survive but to, um, you know, hogtie the wolf and you know, <laughs> blah blah blah. But this one parent <clears throat> was so upset um, and um, would not let her child check that book out from the library. And mm -hmm. so then, you know, we have long conversations about that. One child was being uh, homeschooled and spent all of her time with her father, and I'm not making a statement about who should take care of kids, but uh, this man was quite ardent. Um, and a little child was running up and down the tops of the bookshelves. Oh my gosh. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so the liability for the library right? is when this kid falls off and da da da. So, I had to very diplomatically suggest to the father that the child should not be standing on top of the bookshelf on the floor. Um, <clears throat> another time a little boy was playing with the outlet in the floor. Oh no. And he was, you know, da 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 da. And I thought, okay, how do I do this? So I sold him. I said, you know, boy, I, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And he looks at me and he says, why? And I said, well, because the dragon lives down there. <laughs> if you wake him up, I don't know what will happen. I'd leave him alone. And the kid looks at me and he looks down there and he gave some thought to it and he withdrew. He decided he wouldn't, wouldn't play with that. <laughs> what a great way to handle that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so instead of smacking his fingers and telling him, right. no, you can't do that, you know, let's, let's make Tap it. Tap into the imagination. Um, so lots of stories like that. Yeah. And, um, with the arts festival also people objecting to what was being done or people being in favor of it and I, I think a lot of what public artists and librarians and people like that do is negotiating. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do very well in politics actually because you know <laughs> <laughs> how to talk to people and yeah. what to say and what not to say. And you're not going to please everybody all the time, but no. providing the opportunities to experience different things that you may not otherwise, I always feel it's a very good thing. I know uh, my history with Arts Fest is, you know, when my kids were little, we always went, checked out the artist booths, went to the kids' activities, yeah. and my daughter actually started volunteering when she was 11 with her Girl Scout troop. Oh, great. And she helped with the kids' activities, and she was a, a great volunteer for 15 years before she moved out to the East Coast. And it still holds a very special place in of her heart. it does. And yeah. I, I told her, I said, you should come back this year. It's the 40th anniversary. Come back, I won't put you to work. Just come <laughs> back and enjoy the event. And so I'm hoping that that'll work out for her because yeah. you know, having produced this for 40 years, everybody has a memory of they something. Do. They do. You know, we talk about the concerts that have happened and people have memories of that, yeah. you know, mine is really tied to the kids' activities and the artist booths, although I have some great memories of concerts too. Yes, yeah. So, you know, and it's, audiences. Yeah, it's uh -huh. such a wonderful uh, event yeah. that... Um, and you know those people don't forget, you probably had the same experience, but uh, people are always... the big... Um, thing was Popo the puppet who lived in the library when his friend Don Benda um, who actually was also a very interesting person he started out as a musician he ended up being a school principal uh, at Henry Saban School which is another story that people should know about um, but he would come and be Popo the puppet's friend and uh, and <clears throat> so they would have conversations about things. Popo was always very uh, bad at things. He was always making mistakes and things were going wrong. 
and down inside the puppet show in the basement were a lot of frogs that had lived down there because of the water had flooded and so on. Yep. Um, so that was wonderful to work that way with uh, a human being and the puppets. Well, one day, not so long ago, I was driving across the freeway, the bridge, mm -hmm. and I got stopped by a state highway cop because my lights were out. Oh. And um, I told you the story earlier, but other people might enjoy it. So, uh, okay, and I told him, you know, I got the lights in my, I just came back from buying the lights to change in my car and so on. And um, so he said, uh, uh, oh, he said, I used to bring my, my son to story time all the time on every Saturday. And we, we loved coming to the library to story time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh, yeah, that's really glad. I mean, I'm glad you did that, you know. And so, and then he says, and here's your ticket. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, no, don't I even get a free <laughs> free? You think it would have been a warning or something, especially since you already got the lights. You just need them installed. No, but. here's your ticket. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't a ticket. It was a, a warning. Okay. So that was you know all right. Yeah. So people still adults come up and they remember what they're remembering is not me particularly, but the program and the experience, the experience. it was, and how it still resides in their memory and mm -hmm. their pleasure. Mm -hmm. That's what arts are about. Yeah. That's what artists are doing. It's another way of communicating, yeah. and it communicates the things that hold us together, not the things that drive us apart. Yes, As very much so. I could so. have children in there whose parents and I would not agree politically, Right. but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. That didn't matter. What mattered was that the children were going to grow up and have complete lives, and that they would have some ingenuity and some imagination for solving problems. Mm -hmm. so. Yep, I totally agree with you and I think you know developing that imagination in the kids is so important. Oh, it's fun too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember seeing that in my kids when they were little and we're so thrilled that we continue to work with the Iowa City Public Library and producing ABC's Arts Books and Children, formerly Children's Day, at the Iowa Arts Festival and yeah, yeah. looking forward to what happens, you know, I always love the summer reading program. We oh, always look great. forward to that every year. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Deanne. You know, I, I think just getting that little glimpse into your life and your involvement with Arts Fest and the importance of the arts in our community and how it does bring people together. And I know that 21, when we had the Jazz Fest, it was our first big in-person event. It was such a nice experience just to see everybody out and about. Yeah. And yeah. I always run into people that I haven't seen in a long time. And yeah. so hopefully this year we'll have some tremendous turnouts and people coming oh, down will. to celebrate and yeah, absolutely. looking forward to it. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you for keeping on doing it. That's what I enjoy now. I'm don't have a job, but I live in Iowa City. <laughs> and that's so. an important thing. So many so great connections. Go and see everything and do everything. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us for Creative Conversations. <laughs>